Hey, what's going on? So, um, small update on the car since I haven't really posted anything strictly escort related in a while. Um, it's pretty much just been running and I've been driving it back and forth to work. Um, haven't really been getting on it too much, been trying to break it in nice and easy. Uh, I did my first oil change on it, or my second oil change. The first oil change was at like, you know, 20 miles or whatever. Uh, the second oil change was closer to like 200, 300. I really kind of lost track. I just decided it would probably be a good time to check it. So here's what that looked like. Um, yeah, it was kind of concerning. Uh, there's, there's two whole factions with the oil situation. You know, you've got some people to look at it and say, oh, that's perfectly fine on a rebuilt engine. Yeah, it's just going to happen. you got parts that are going to wear together and rub together, and you're going to get some metal particulates in your oil. Um, you know, and also the uh, head stud lubricant gives you that. Uh, it's, you know, like the molly lube gives you that uh, glittery kind of look. So, you know, there's some that say, all right, you know, that's perfectly normal. And then there's other people that say, I built engines before, and I've never seen anything that looked like that, and I think you got a problem. You've got something to worry about. So, I don't know. Anyways, I just changed the oil, changed the filter, and continued driving it. Uh, and it seems to be going... It seems to be running fine, except a few days ago, the engine developed a slight knock. Um, I don't know if it's true knock. It's... It's really strange. It's between 2,000 and 3,000 RPM, usually more towards 3,000 RPM. It's listening to it, you know, using the old screwdriver against the block trick. Um, it doesn't sound like it's coming from the block. It's loudest at the valve cover. So what I'm really hoping is that it's the um, hydraulic lifters. The hydraulic lifters in these engines, in these Mazda BP engines, are notorious for ticking, for going bad. You know, just after so many thousands of miles, they get clogged and they get spongy or, you know, things happen and they just, they should probably be replaced. There is a procedure for rebuilding them. I don't think there's an official procedure for rebuilding them because I don't think they're a rebuildable part, but there's a few videos online of people actually pulling them apart and cleaning them out and rebuilding them. And that is what I did the first time around with this. Figured now it's time to probably just go ahead and actually change those lifters out. You know, I'm not going to bother rebuilding them again because it's a very tedious process and it's not really worth my time considering that... 16 whole new lifters are only 85 bucks shipped. So, got a few boxes of lifters. And uh, we're going to crack those open and see what they look like. You know, I'm, I'm really, really, really hoping it's just the lifters, because if the noise doesn't go away, then it, it might be bottom end noise, it might be rod noise. You know, when, when I built the engine, uh, the bearing clearances were pretty wide. One of the things that worries me is that kind of glitter, that goldish kind of glittery color that was in the oil. I'm not sure if that was just the oil making that yellow color or if the particulates were actually that color. Hopefully I don't have to pull the bottom end of this thing apart. Because that would make me really sad and I'd probably just burn the fucking car down. Nah, I couldn't do that to this thing. Oh, here's a box I already opened up. The box is soaked in oil. <clears throat> So yeah, they would, like, like the box is just like soaked in oil. It's kind of weird, but whatever. So, I guess I should probably get some clean paper towels or something. These are basically it. They're just a little. I'll clean these off for now. They're just throwing them in the way they are. It smells like machine oil or something. Yeah, I'll probably clean these up really good before I put them in because I don't know what kind of oil they're using and I don't want it to contaminate my engine oil. So, yeah, but these are basically it. These are the hydraulic lifters. They these ride on top of the uh, the valve stems and they sit in between the valve stem and the uh, the cam the, the point behind these things what they do is 
There's a little passage in here for oil. They fuel with oil. There's a little plunger that should be solid, solid right now because it's filled with oil. Um, a little plunger, and they're basically they're self they're they're self adjusting. Um, before in the past, or even now, uh, some cars choose to run solid lifters uh, to avoid the problem of these things going bad. You know, especially if you're running like I guess really stiff valve springs, you may want to go to a solid lifter, or really extreme cams, you may want to go with a solid lifter. But then the problem with solid lifters is you have to uh, shim them. You have to manually adjust for the space between the top of the bucket and the cam. Um, so yeah, but basically the way these work is they fill with oil and this little plunger moves to adjust for the distance. So they're constantly self-adjusting. But what happens when they go bad, so this is one from an older engine I had laying around, or not an older engine, but this is one from, this is an older one that I had laying around. So what happens when they get bad is that, that they stop holding oil. You know, these things should, once they're filled with oil, they should stay filled with oil. And this one's all nice and spongy, so it's a bad lifter. All right, so the first thing you want to do is remove your spark plug wires. And of course, you're going to want to remove the valve cover. So in order to uh, get to these uh, hydraulic lifters, which are up under the cam lobes, you're going to have to remove the cams. So of course, in order to remove the cams, uh, you're going to have to take this timing belt off. And before we take the timing belt off, uh, I recommend getting the engine set to top dead center. So I'm just going to take a wrench and get down there on the crank and rotate this around until I can see the timing mark. See what I'm going to do? I'm going to make this easy on myself. I'm going to move the spark plug. Just go ahead and remove the spark plugs. So I went ahead and removed the spark plugs for two reasons. Uh, one, uh, it'll make the easier a lot. It'll make the engine a lot easier to turn over by hand. And two, I can actually physically look down to the spark plug hole and see when cylinder number one is up at top dead center. I'll just use this as a top dead center indicator. Oh, there we go. Now that the engine set at top dead center, I can remove the timing belt. On these BP engines, it's pretty simple. There's a tensioner, it sits right here. It should be a 14 millimeter. I don't know if you can really see down in there, but right here there's a little tensioner, 14 millimeter. Go ahead and break that loose. And that should allow the other thing to do, there's also a spring that sits on here. You can pop that spring off. Has a tight fucking spring. There we go. With that spring off, you can uh, that releases the tension on the timing belt tensioner. So the belt should be loose enough. We can just slide her on off. The next step in this process is going to be removing these caps uh, that hold the cams down. So the way you want to do this is, uh, you know, there there's a procedure for it somewhere, and uh, you want to make sure you kind of loosen these, not necessarily in a sequence, but just a little bit at a time. You know, I usually start in the center and work my way out, and I'll just back these off just a little bit. The reason for that is, is that these, uh, you know, there's springs up under here, you know, up under the valves, or on top of the valves, and they're putting tension, you know, the, their springs are putting tension on the cams. So if you go and you loosen up one side of these and you still have one completely tight, you can either bend the cam or break these bolts. So you want to make sure when you take these apart, you do it evenly, just a little bit at a time so that it raises up at the same time. I 
Uh, also, uh, no power tools when doing this. These are very small bolts inside of an aluminum head, and even when loosening them, you can damage them. So, I'll go ahead and I'll start with the exhaust side. And really what I'm doing, I'm just doing about probably like a half turn on each one. Huh, that was really loose. That was, huh, huh, that's weird. <laughs> uh, all right, boys and girls, so, um, that, uh, that bolt there was, uh, was that loose. I don't know how that happened. I don't know if I forgot to, I don't know if I forgot to tighten it down or if it backed itself out. But, yeah, I've, uh, I've put about uh, 200 miles on this thing with that not even close to being tight. You don't really have to worry about mixing these up too much. I mean, you don't want to put them in the wrong order, but you can't really mix them up because they're stamped and they're numbered. So, you can't really, you know, these are, they have an E marked on them and then they have the position that they should go in. Now we can remove the exhaust cam. Alright. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the intake cam. Exact same procedure. Alright, so if you were pulling these out to rebuild them, you'd want to make sure you label them so that you know what uh, bore they belong in. Or you can take like an egg crate or something like that and mark on a crate where each, uh, each one goes because, you know, they've kind of, as they age, they kind of wear a pattern into their bore and you don't want to, you know, you don't want to mix them up. Since I'm putting all new lifters in, it doesn't matter. I'm going to toss them, so... The easiest way to get these guys out is with a magnet. Just like that. So that one's actually good. Nice and solid. Yeah, they all seem to be holding oil rock solid. So that means my noise is probably not coming from the head. That's really depressing. I'm going to go ahead and put new lifters in anyways because I bought them and I got it apart. And I guess I'll move on and try and figure out what else that could possibly be making that noise. So, yep, yeah, just going to go ahead and throw these guys in there. Probably do a little assembly lube or something on them. Alright, so those are all in. I'm going to put my intake cam back in. Try and get it close to where it's that top dead center. The same thing for your exhaust cam. And try and make sure it's close to
Same thing with tightening these down. You want to make sure you tighten them down just a little bit at a time. So you don't want to bend the cam and you don't want to strip any of these, these bolts. The way I get this lined up is a little differently. I, uh, I have the exhaust cam mod, so I don't have a tick on the side, uh, you know, like you do that you normally line up on the that you would normally line up on the plate here. So instead of what I do, I take the exhaust side, I line it up with the tick. I make sure the crank is at top dead center, which it's not. So the crank is at top dead center. Hot. And I take my exhaust cam, get it lined up, get the belt on that guy. And then take the intake cam, get it rotated around. Oh, that's way too far. Wrong direction. Get that slid on like so. And then I count the teeth. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 teeth. As long as you have 19 teeth between the two belts, they should be aligned. 